everyone welcome to the lecture series on introduction to kinematics and mechanisms under this today we will discuss about invergence of single slider crank chain now single slider crank chain is obtained as an equivalent linkage of four bar chain by replacing one of the turning pairs in a four bar chain by a sliding pair the figure shows single slider crank chain in which there are four number of links so this is link number 1 this is link number 2 this is link number 3 and this is link number 4 so it has four links three turning pairs first turning pair is the pin joint between link number 1 and 2 second is a pin joint between link number 2 and 3 and third turning pair is the pin joint between link number 3 and 4 it consists of one sliding pair as well which exist between link number 1 and 4 so a single slider crank chain has four links three turning pairs and one sliding pairs so sometimes it is also called as 3r 1p mechanism r stands for revolute or turning pairs and p stands for prismatic or sliding pairs so 3r 1p mechanisms means a mechanism with three turning pairs and one sliding pair now in previous lecture we have seen the inversion is obtained by fixing one of the links at a time in a kinematic chain in slider crank chain there are four number of links so we can obtain four different mechanisms by fixing one link at a time so here link number 1 is fixed to get one kind of mechanism here link number 2 is fixed to get another kind of mechanism similarly link number 3 and link number 4 can be fixed to obtain two other different kinds of mechanisms so four bar chain has four number of links so we can obtain uh, four different mechanisms in total from uh, four bar chain as well as single slider crank chain because single slider crank chain also has four links in total what your mechanism you obtain by fixing one of the links in a kinematic chain you will remember one thing always that in all the inversions obtain relative motion between the links will always remain same that means in all the inversions link 1 and 2 will form a turning pair in all the inversions link 2 and 3 will form a turning pair in all the inversions link 3 and 4 also forms a turning pair and in all the inversions of single slider crank chain link number 1 and 4 always forms a prismatic pair so regardless of the type of link you fix the relative motion between the links is not changed now let us go through the four inversions of single slider crank chain one by one so here is the first inversion which is obtained by fixing link number 1 or you can remember like when we fix link with one revolute pair and one prismatic pair we get this kind of inversion so here i have numbered that link as link number 1 so i am saying that i am fixing link number 1 that is link with one revolute pair link number 1 is forming revolute pair with link number 2 and one prismatic pair so link number 1 is uh, forming prismatic pair with link number 4 so when we fix this link which is having one revolute pair and one prismatic pair at its end we get the first inversion now in this inversion you can also represent this inversion like this okay we have splitted the link number 1 into two uh, one pivot and 
one guide of the slider so in this inversion link number 1 is fixed link number 2 will act as crank it will execute full rotation about pivot point with respect to link number 1 link number 3 is called as coupler link number 4 will act as slider it will slide with respect to link number 1 first inversion of single slider crank chain is used in IC engine mechanism and in air compressors in IC engine mechanism piston is acting as the driver because we give uh, input motion to the piston and in case of air compressors crank will act as the driver and the piston will act as the driven link so you remember this application of first inversion of single slider crank chain are IC engine mechanism and air compressor IC engine mechanism and air compressor okay so here I have shown IC engine mechanism so this the yellow color link about which the disc is rotating is link number one which is fixed link the cylinder also forms the link number one which is a fixed link okay this is link number one is cylinder and the pivot of the crank so link one is fixed link two is uh, uh, acting as a crank link two is rotating about this pivot point relative to link number one so this circular disc is your link number two which is acting as a crank which executes full rotation about link number one now link number three is the coupler link so link number three is the coupler link which connects crank and the slider so this is your link number three which is the coupler link we call it as a connecting rod this link number three is connecting link number two crank and link number four slider this is link number four which is acting as a slider okay and the relative motion between all the links will remain same that is link number one and two will form a turning pair link number two and three and link number three and four also forms a turning pair and link number one and four forms a prismatic or sliding pair so this is how the actual IC engine mechanism looks like this is link number one which is fixed this is link number one which is fixed frame this is link number two crank this is link number three connecting rod or coupler link and this is link number four which is sliding inside the fixed cylinder now second inversion second inversion is obtained by fixing link number two or you can say that when we fix crank of the first inversion or when we fix the link with two revolute pairs now there are two links with two revolute pairs link number two is having two revolute pairs as well as link number three forms two revolute pairs so I have written here the crank with two revolute pairs is fixed means the link the smaller link which has two revolute pairs is fixed we obtain second inversion of single slider crank chain now in this link number two is fixed link link number one will act as slider which will slide with respect to link number four link number three and link number four together will act as the crank so link number three and four will rotate toward this pivot point which is fixed with link number two so you can represent this mechanism in another way like this i have made the fixed link vertical i have named the turning pair between link number one and two as o and let us name turning pair between link number two and three as a 
and the turning pair between link number 3 and 4 as B. So 2 is fixed, 3 along with 4 will execute full rotation about A, okay, and link number 1 will rotate about O. Applications of second inversion are with first quick return motion mechanism and rotary engine mechanism. Okay, so again you will remember this. Applications of second inversion of single slider crank chain are Whitworth quick return motion mechanism and rotary engine. So here I have shown Whitworth's quick return motion mechanism which uses second inversion of single slider crank chain in which link number 2 is fixed link. So this is fixed by what A. So this is fixed pivot A. Here is the fixed pivot O. This is fixed pivot O. So OA is link number 2 which is fixed. So this is my link number 2 which is shown in blue color which forms fixed pivots. Now at A is connected link number 3. Okay. So at A is connected link number 3 to which link number 4 in the form of slider is attached so this is my link number 4 which is connected to link number 3 using a turning pair now 4 slides relative to link number 1 ok 4 is sliding relative to link number 1 which is the slotted link here and link number 1 is pivoted at point O. So this slotted link is pivoted at point O. Okay. So 1 and 2 forms a turning pair at O. Now what we do to use this as a Whitworth's quick return motion mechanism, we extend link number 1 backwards. So we have extended link number 1 backward. We'll name this point as point C. So this is point C. Then we will attach one additional binary link, link number 5, okay, link number 5 and one more link in the form of slider is attached to the link number 5. So here we will attach link number 6, okay, which will slide with respect to a fixed link, link number 2, which is fixed in this case. So 2 and 6 forms. A sliding pair so this is there are two additional links link number 5 and 6 attached to the second inversion to obtain the width per quick return motion mechanism now in this case link number 3 and 4 will rotate about point O okay link number 1 will rotate uh, sorry link number 3 and 4 will rotate about point A and link 1 rotates about point O Subsequently, link 6 will reciprocate between two extreme positions. And during the forward stroke, the motion of slider will take more time than the return stroke. So, forward stroke is used as the working stroke or cutting stroke, and return stroke is used as the idle stroke. And hence, this is called as quick return motion mechanism because the tool that is uh, tool attached to the slider link number six will execute forward stroke with more time and it will return during the idle stroke quickly so this is called as whitpers quick return motion mechanism so here i have taken the animated diagram of quick return motion mechanism from this website this link number two is fixed so this red color pivot is link number 2 which is fixed now this link number 1 is pivoted at point O which slides relative to link number 4 so this circular disk forms link number 3 and this red pin forms link number 4 which is sliding inside this slotted link okay which is our link number one 
And these are the two additional links, link number 5 and uh, link number 6. So this is Whitworth's quick return motion mechanism. Now second application of second inversion is rotary engine. Now, in case of rotary engine, what we do? Link number 2 is fixed. So this is link number 2 which is fixed. This is pivot O. This is pivot A. To pivot A, link number 3 is connected in the form of connecting rod. So these are link number 3, which are geometrically identical to each other. And all these connecting rods, that is link number 3, will rotate about pivot A. So link number 3 rotates about pivot A. Now link number 1, the shape of link number 1 is uh, changed here. Link number 1 is in the form of cylinder. Right? And this cylinder rotates about pivot point O of the fixed link. So link number 1 rotates about pivot O of the fixed link. So this cylinder will rotate about point O. And all the connecting rods or link number 3 will rotate about A. Link number 1 slides with respect to link number 4 which is a slider. Okay. So this is how the rotary engine works. So here the animated diagram I have taken this from this website to clear the working of rotary engine. So this red color vertical link this is pivot A this is pivot O okay this is pivot O this is pivot A so this is the fixed link link number Two. Now at pivot A link number 3 are connected and which rotates about pivot A. So all these connecting rods shown in blue color. This is link number 3. Okay, All these connecting rods shown in blue color rotates about pivot A link number 3. 3 is connected to slider 4 using a turning pair. So this all these sliders sliding inside the cylinders are link number 4. Now 4 is sliding with respect to link number 1 which is in the form of slotted cylinder. So this cylinder forms the link number 1 which are uh, which is uh, rotating about O. Okay. Now third inversion when we fix link number 3 that is when we fix connecting rod with two revolute pairs <coughs> or a bigger link with two revolute pairs is fixed to get inversion number 3. Or you can just remember that when we fix the connecting rod of first inversion, we get inversion number 3. So link number 3 is fixed. In this link number 1, act as slider. Link number 2 will act as crank. It will rotate about A. Link number 3 is fixed now. Link number 4 will oscillate about pivot point B, which lies on fixed link. Okay, now link number 4 will oscillate and link number 2 will act as crank. Applications of third inversion are oscillating cylinder engine mechanism and crank and slotted lever mechanism. Applications of inversion number 3, oscillating cylinder engine mechanism and crank and slotted lever mechanism. Let us see one by one. So link number 2 is acting as crank. So here is my link number 2 which will rotate about this point O okay, about this point O uh, sorry A this is point A okay, this is point A so link number 2 will rotate about point A link number 3 is fixed 3 is connected to 4 using a turning pair so 3 is connected to 4 this cylinder using a turning pair and 4 is connected to 1 using a sliding pair. This is my link number 1, which slide with respect to link number 4. Okay, this piston forms link number 1. And 1 is again pivoted with 2 at O. This is point O, where 1 is pivoted with link number 2. 
Now link 2 will act as crank and this cylinder will oscillate about pivot point B which lies on fixed link, link number 3. Okay, let us look at this oscillating cylinder engine mechanism. This green color link is crank, link number 2. This is link number 1 which is a slider which slides inside this link number 4 and this link number 4 oscillates about this fixed pivot point B which lies on a fixed link that is link number 3 not this so this is oscillating cylinder engine mechanism in this case cylinder oscillates with respect to the fixed link Now, second application of inversion number 3 is crank and slotted lever mechanism. Okay, crank and slotted lever mechanism. In this, this link number 2 will act as crank. This is link number 1 slider which slides relative to link number 4 which is now in the form of slotted link which oscillates about this point A. And two additional links, link number 5 and link number 6 are connected to the slotted link. So when link number 2 rotates, this link number C will oscillate between two extreme points. Like this. This circular disc shown in green color is the crank, link number 2, which rotates about point A, pivot A. Okay. Then link number 2 rotates about pivot A, link number 3 is fixed. Okay. So link number 2 rotates with respect to link number 3. Then link number 1 slides with respect to link number 4. Okay. So this red color link or red color pin which is rotating with the crank is your link number 1. Red color pin acts as link number 1 which slides with respect to link number 4 which is in the form of slotted link. This is the slotted link shown in black color. This is our link number 4 inside which link number 1 shown in red color is uh, sliding and this link number 4 will oscillate about the fixed pivot B. So link number 4, this black link is oscillating with respect to the fixed pivot here. This is the pivot point B. So link number 4 is oscillating about point B. Now we attach two extra links, link number 5 in the form of binary link, this one, and link number 6 in the form of slider to which the cutting tool is attached to get the crank and slotted lever mechanism which is used in shaping machines. Now the last inversion of single slider crank chain is obtained by fixing link number 4 or the slider of the first inversion. So when you fix link number 4 or slider of the first inversion we get the fourth inversion which is called as the hand pump. Okay. In this link 1 slides inside link 4 you will remember this here is the rigid connection so whole of this 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 thing and this vertical link are acting as a single link link number 1 which slides inside this cylinder which is fixed link number 4. Link number 2 is oscillating Okay. Link number 2 is oscillating about this pivot point and link number 3 is also oscillating about this fixed pivot and link number 4 is fixed. So this is the hand pump. Thank you.